Okay, well, it is 7.34 p.m. on Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. Uh, this is the April 12th meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. So good evening. <clears throat> My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Roger DuPont. Here. Uh, Patrick Hanlon. Um, I'm here and hoping that green chair could be turned on for me anytime soon. Oh, I, I got that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Mills. Here. You, Daniel Riccardelli. Here. And good to see you. Elaine Hoffman. Here. Good to see you. Uh, and did Venkat Holy, I have not seen him join us yet. Mr. Chairman, I got a message from Mr. Holy. He'll be a little late, but will be joining us. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, from the town, we have with us Rick Valarelli, who's our board administrator. Good evening. Good evening. And I don't know, is, is Vinny joining us tonight? He is. I am. Oh, there I'm you here. are. Vincent Lee, good to see you as well. <clears throat> and then checking in for the hearings we have this evening, appearing for 4 6 River Street, uh, Dennis Lasco. Here. You're here. Good to see you. On behalf of 88 Glenburn Road, uh, Brenton Nagel. We are here. Good to see you. Uh, appearing for 18 Brantwood Road, um, Anthony Jaffe. Uh, no, this is Keith Miller. I'm the architect on the project. I'll be representing that project. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and then for 44 Edmund Road, uh, James Cypher. Or not, is there anyone appearing for 44 Edmund Road? Uh, Mr. Chairman, they continued because okay. they have an additional request that will be coming up May 10th. Okay, so they're going for 510. All right. So I believe, did Mr. we Chairman, continue them to May 10th at the last hearing or did we continue them to tonight? Uh, we did not. They uh, realized that their uh, request was much more complicated than the original request and needed more permission from the board to move forward with what they had proposed. Okay. So they, they had to do a redesign. Mm, okay. <coughs> All right. And joining us now is uh, Ms. Venkat Holy. Good to see you. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures signed into law on February 15, 2022. This act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provision of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom app with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda post to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by phone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses, arbitrates, and the use of, excuse me, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters. The board hereby acknowledges the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. 
So we are starting this evening with an administrative item, the approval of a written decision. This item relates to the operation of the board and as such will be conducted with, <clears throat> excuse me, without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. And after introducing the item, I will invite members of the board to provide any comments, questions, or motions they may have. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so, do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself for the record. So this brings us on our agenda to item number two, the approval of the decision for 108 Pleasant Street. Uh, this was a special permit um, that was granted with conditions. The uh, written decision was prepared by uh, Mr. Hanlon and distributed to the board for comments. I know Mr. Mills had submitted some comments. I had submitted some comments. Um, are there any further comments to submit in regards to this decision? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Uh, in the, <clears throat> Mr. Riccardelli had uh, comments relating to the, sign the signature lines at, in the front and which also applied in the back. So those have been corrected. So noted, thank you. And with, were those included in the, um, in the updated version that went out this afternoon? No, they, they were not. They're subsequent to that, okay. They were not. They just, they they get the right, the members of the board in one case and got, get the right suffix in the other, but they're purely administrative and non-substantive items. Perfect. With that, may I have a motion to approve the written decision for 108 Pleasant Street? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanley. Uh, I move that the board approve the written decision in 108 uh, Pleasant Street with the uh, that was distributed earlier with the amendment that I alerted the board to uh, a few moments ago. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. We have a second on that. Second. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. So we'll, we'll do a roll call vote of the board members who uh, were involved in that decision. Uh, Roger Dupont. Aye. Uh, Patrick Hanlon. Aye. Kevin Mills? Aye. Daniel Riccardelli? Aye. And chair votes aye. That decision is approved. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> we are now turning to um, anything else. Um, just wanted to make a brief note that the, the next meeting of the board will be uh, in two weeks on April 26th. And the intent is to uh, review policies and procedures of the board. Um, and I think we'll also do the election of officers at that meeting. I think I had originally discussed doing it possibly tonight, uh, but it's not on the agenda. I forgot to include it on the agenda. So we'll do it in two weeks. Um, so now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda, some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves, make their presentation to the board. I'll then request members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I'll open the meeting to public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So with that, we'll move to item number three, which is docket number 368946 River Street. This is a continuance of a request for a special permit. Um, and with that, I will ask uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Lasko to proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if I could, Rick Valerelli, Administrator. Yes, Rick. Uh, so uh, Mr. Lasko informed me today that the plans took a while to prepare. Uh, okay. He is uh, prepared to go forward uh, with his architect and present to the board what the uh, redesign came up with. Okay, thank you. Does anyone from the board have any concerns about proceeding with in this fashion? Seeing none, please proceed. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, is, is there a need to recap any of the kind of introductory uh, information I brought to the board in the last meeting, or should we just proceed where we left off? I think I would proceed where we left off. Okay, great. Then I'm, I believe uh, Mr. Valieri uh, has already given uh, Wiley Brown screen share permission, and he's going to share some updated images. And if those are uh, satisfactory to the board, we'll submit the uh, actual plans per se um, 
subsequent to that, hopefully that can be administratively approved. Okay. All right, hello, good evening, uh, Chair, uh, board members. Uh, let me see if this screen share is working. Again, I'm Wiley Brown, the architect for uh, four to six River Street. Nice to see you guys again. Um, where is, okay, yes, it looks like it will allow me to share. Let me just be sure I share the right one here. Okay. Do you, do you see that? We do. Okay. Let me get it in presentation mode. Okay, you still see it? Yep. All right. Okay, so I, I did, I, you know, left a few slides from the previous meeting in here just to kind of get people um, a reminder of where we were at. Uh, look, sorry, I'm, I'm fixing my screen so I can see the board members here in the screen as well. Okay, um, so, you know, we're adding the half floor to the, the existing building. Uh, here's the, the River Street in context with, with the neighbors, which are all uh, wood frame buildings as opposed to itself, which is, which is brick, two and a half story. Um, you know, again, just kind of reviewing the, the neighbors' buildings. And we left off here at, at, a, at uh, this, uh, not necessarily this slide, but uh, this idea here with, with the, the two and a half stories sticking out and these kind of frames that would, would come out to the street. And we were asked to, to further kind of uh, explain that. There was a concern of it being too imposing. So we, we took this image here that kind of shows the existing in context with the buildings and created a, a um, to scale rendering for it. The first option we put in was, was a setback from porch, which was requested by one of the board members, I, I don't remember who, and, um, and, and you know set the piece here with the frame set back to be flush with the, uh, the front of the existing brick. And then we made the, the option kind of our preferred option, which is to, to bring the frames out even to the porch but again, it's still supposed to be light and open and airy, and it's just kind of like a, a pergola that creates shade and allows some, some green to grow up. But um, you know, the idea is not to be very imposing, to be very light. It's an open uh, terrace, and I, I think the image does most of the speaking for itself. And um, so I, I guess that's, <laughs> that's what we prepared. <laughs> and we're glad to hear your comments and thoughts. Certainly. Um, do you... you so at this point, you've done the two renderings, but you, you don't have, as you had said before, you don't have specific drawings related for the for these images. No, we don't have, we don't have specific, no specific drawings. I mean, they basically would refer to the original drawings just as much. It's just a matter of the spacing of those those frames and nothing has changed except for essentially, um, you know, we, we did. I think we discussed this before, like if the frames are a little denser back here and they get less dense as they come forward. Um, but other than that, there really hasn't been uh, much change of the, of the number and the spacing of the frames. And that will be, we can, we'll certainly update that um, after we get a, get a decision on, on which, which way to go forward. Okay. And in terms of the spacing on the frames, so the, the frames that are closest to the street, what's the approximate spacing? It's uh, about two and a half feet at the moment. So they, they range, they go from about two and a half feet. And then as you step closer to the building, they drop down to about uh, six to eight inches. Okay. That's the gap between the... Uh, essentially the, the, the four inch or the three and a half inch wide uh, beams. Questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Riccadelli. Uh, so I, I know I had um, spoken up about um, sort of the massing of, of that pergola structure the last time we met. Uh, and I think that these images are really helpful and thank you for taking our comments. Um, I, you know, I, I personally, uh, I'm not going to push you one way or the other, but I do think that uh, it's really helpful to see the wider spacing at the at the street. It doesn't feel as imposing as uh, we could have imagined it. So I, I, I think that this is a, a big improvement from my perspective. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Chairman, Mr. Mills. Yeah, can we go back to the first option where we back the frames off? Thank you.
I do say I appreciate the spacing. It does help. Any further <clears throat> questions from the board? None at the moment. I will go ahead and open this meeting for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing the decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks that those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host, asked to give your name and address and given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. With that, I will open this hearing for public comment. Are there any public questions or comments regarding 46 River Street? Going once, going twice. Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment. <coughs> At this point, I think the board has a couple of different things we can do. Um, so the request um, is for a special permit and it's, it's, the, it's principally coming before us because the applicant has no usable open space is, the, is what's driving the initial um, request. And because they are increasing the gross floor area they are required to increase the usable open space, but there, there is currently no usable open space. Um, and so the board, um, the board needs to make a determination of whether uh, the proposed addition at the attic level and the reconfiguration of the front, whether this is uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood or not, along with the, the special permit, uh, excuse me, the special permit requirements of the, uh, as stated in the uh, bylaws and in the, <clears throat> in the state law. So the, I think the board, we can do one of two things at this point. Um, if we would like to give the applicant specific direction um, on, on one or the other and ask them to uh, complete the drawings and return to the to the board, we can do that. Or if the board is comfortable um, using a rendering as a basis for a decision, we can um, we can proceed along those lines as well. So I would like to um, to hear from the board both in terms of which of the the two options: option A, which ends the frames at the edge of the existing building, or option B, which brings the frames forward over the uh, the existing porch extension, and then whether the members of the board feel that uh, we have enough information to make a decision at this time or whether we feel we need to get uh, more firm documentation before we can reach a decision. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. <clears throat> I wonder if Mr. Valerelli could provide some advice here. I, uh, the question I have is whether if we say that we're approving this subject to the usual condition that is consistent with the final plans, we would have to say and in a, in a that or a different condition uh, that it would be have to be consistent with those plans, either not saying more and giving the applicant discretion or saying uh, consistent with the rendering labeled option B or option A. Um, and my question is, suppose we did say option B, I'm, I'm saying that just because that's what's on my screen. Um, is that when it gets to the inspectional services and they have that and nothing more, uh, is that going to be enough for them to go on in enforcing it or do they need something that's more specific? Because ultimately, the what the question is really whether we need to delay this for another two weeks in order to get something that's properly enforceable or whether uh this would be good enough and I'm, mr valerelli knows that better than anyone mr valerelli 
great, great question, Mr. Hamlin. So the in special services, we'll only look at the attic space as a story or a half story. So if the attic space meets the criteria of a half story, regardless of the design and what it looks like aesthetically, it meets the definition of a half story. Uh, so therefore it will look no further and we'll only look uh, for the board's decision to grant the special permit based on the lack of usable open space, nothing more. So if we have, Mr. Chairman, if I could get a clarification, mm -hmm. if we put a condition on this that requires the applicant to use option A or option B, uh, you're saying <laughs> that ISD would not enforce that condition? Is that a question for me, Mr. Chair? Yes, it is, Mr. Sir. It, it absolutely is. So every condition on the special permit uh, is enforced. In fact, it's written on the building permit card. Uh, the identification of the case, docket number, uh, must meet the conditions of said case and uh, so forward. And, and one step further, the applicant knows that going in, that it was a special condition, uh, special permit of variance, and he has to adhere to the conditions. So, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if Mr. Rally, Mr. Valerie could tell us whether, if whether if we just said the, with the final plans he has, plus option B, whether that's enough or whether we he needs something more specific from us. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I answer that? Yes, please. So, going forward, it's up to the applicant and his contractor to make sure that every condition imposed on the special permit of variance is met. If it's not, then they have to adjust the uh, project so it conforms to what uh, was given uh, as permission initially. We, we, we cannot, for lack of a better term, babysit this. We can only warn the applicant that he was given permission and there were a bunch of conditions uh, that exist and it's up to him to meet those conditions. And during inspection, those conditions will be looked at and we will do our special services will do their best to make sure all those conditions were met. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Good <clears throat> So I just wanna reiterate, so as far as inspectional services is concerned with regard to the determination of a half story, that really only relates to the space that we see that is enclosed and has nothing really to do with the pergola structure itself. Is, is that accurate? So the, the special permit that's being requested is for uh, permission to construct the addition. Um, and then the board is able to uh, condition that upon um, you know certain features because we are a lot, we are charged with um, applying the residential design guidelines right. to the project. So, if I may, then going back to Mr. Valerelli's initial comment, really, again, the determination of half story is really what we see that's enclosed, where you see those two skylights. Uh, is that an accurate statement? Yes, and everything in. Everything that is not enclosed is not included in the calculation for gross floor area. Okay, and, and I, I may be sort of gilding a lily here a little bit, but I just want to make sure that, you know, in relation to Mr. Hanlon's question, if we vote for option A, which steps those supporting those members back from the edge of the building, what exactly is describing that so that inspectional services can look at that and say, well, you know, it's, this is option A and you can only go thus far toward the edge of the building. I just wanna make sure <clears throat> that whichever option that we might choose, there's enough information in what we give as a decision Mm -hmm. uh, so that inspectional services doesn't have to babysit so they can say, oh, okay, well, you know, and if we had the plans, the elevations that we were talking about earlier, I would think that that would be clear. But since we're really dealing with, you know, a, a picture, 
I, I'm not sure, and I defer to the, the architects on the board, I defer to you guys as far as whether or not saying option A uh, is enough information, you know, that's all. Hey, thank you, Mr. DuPont. Um, certainly from the discussion, it does sound like um, if the board was to pick option A or option B, um, it would certainly be prudent of the board to request that the applicant uh, revise the drawings that are submit the formal submission to the board before the board uh, makes its final vote, um, just, to conf just to confirm that, um, that the drawings that are submitted, that they uh, are in keeping with the what the board is requesting, just to make sure that we're all on the same on the same page before we uh, before we issue a permit. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'm certainly happy to okay. submit uh, modified plans, and that is our intent. I, I guess my only question would be: is there is there a mechanism we can set up? that's a more kind of like administrative check of the plans that doesn't require waiting the two weeks for the next meeting. Could, could we, uh, I don't know if there's a, a representative of the board that could take a, take a look at the plans in the interim and confirm that they meet um, the requirement. I would ask, so Mr. Hanlon, if the board was to say, you know, the board issues a special permit and one of the conditions is that um, a member of the board shall review the submitted, pl the plans to be submitted for, um, to confirm that they, you know, align with the option provided in rendering form at the hearing do you think that is something that could be included as a condition or do you think that that's possibly outside our scope? Um, I haven't actually seen us do that before. Uh, we have done things where that people have had administrative review other than the board. Like for example, under some circumstances, the director of planning has that kind of discretion. So it's not like it's, totally strange um but i must say that if we're dealing with just two weeks i feel really i feel somewhat uncomfortable innovating on procedure here uh and although i do think that well i don't know if it would make sense i do think that it would be possible to just defer deliberation on this and have some have one of the members of the board preferably one of the architects review this and may and and if the architect thought the board member thought that it was consistent with the intent of the board it could so advise us and we could deal with this administratively without having to do uh, to go through the rigmarole of a hearing uh, but i don't really feel very comfortable um sort of delegating that final administrative review I, i'm not sure that it would not be i'm not sure that it would be unlawful but i am not sure that it would be entirely lawful and whether it's lawful or not, I'm not sure that uh, it's sufficiently specific to avoid questions later on. So I may feel differently about this if we were talking about a longer day but delay, but but really it's quite quite short. And you know, frankly, if the applicant had decided to give us the plans that incorporated these two ideas today, which he had a whole month to do um the uh we 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 could deal with this tonight and not have had the discussion that took up the last 10 minutes mr chairman mr mills uh i'm very sympathetic to the applicant wanting to move on but i'm really hesitant to um go ahead as he's indicated and have this kind of off uh page review and sign off I think it's a slippery slope and a precedent we could uh, be sorry we've started. I think other people could start coming in and asking for such 
um, steps to be taken on their projects. And it, I think it could begin uh, a chaotic process. I think we should stay with what we are. It's only two weeks. And as Mr. Hamlin said, if they had the prints, we could vote now. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Um, Mr. Brown, how long would it take to provide the board with a revised set of drawings? Well, the, the, the question at this point is, is uh, it's been a bit confusing because you, you, are you asking it to provide multiple sets of drawings and no, you'll choose I, or, or can I set, provide one set and you give a, a yay or an A on that? And that, that's that's kind of what, mm -hmm. as, I, as yesterday, last week we discussed multiple variations. And so producing multiple sets of drawings yep. to be proposed. And so the, the question is, is kind of a packed question. I think, what the, I think the direct the board would give you direction this evening as to whether to proceed with option A or option B. Mm -hmm. And then given that direction this evening, how long would it, would it take to prepare a revised set of drawings? I can certainly have those uh, in the next two weeks for sure. Mr. Um, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Dubon. Um, so I'm not sure about giving direction for option A or option B. I'd like to see them both. So that when it comes time to vote, and again, I don't think it's really that big of a question, but as long as we're going to get in additional information, I'd like to see, because uh, I assume that those plans are just a very, you know, small, um, a small adjustment from one to the other from option A to B. Mm -hmm. So I'd prefer to see both of those uh, so that at the next meeting we can look at them. I think it's a pretty straightforward question. So I wouldn't imagine it would take up too much time, but again, I'd rather see both. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry, Mr. Chair, I had one question. Yes. Not to deviate from the option here. Um, I know that the usable open space calculation is the reason for the special permit. Um, would the enclosed first floor Enclose the front yard setback. Sorry, I think we lost you there for a minute. Sorry, give me one second. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question is that the enclosed first, second floor enclosure would that mm -hmm. encroach in the front yard setback? So that I believe is already enclosed, and they're That's just instead of replanting. Okay, so it was an existing non-conform. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. So for the board needs to decide how we want to proceed on this. Um, Personally, I'm comfortable picking an option and asking the, the applicant to proceed. Um, you know, Mr. DuPont has asked that we receive documentation on both options um, to review before proceeding. I'd like to hear from other board members what their sense is on that. If, if they feel that um, they would be able to proceed with selecting an option this evening and moving forward, or if we should ask to receive both the sets of drawings. Mr. Chairman. Mills. Um, I, I concur, Mr. DuPont. I mean, you, you draw option B and then you take two ribs out. That's not a big change in the drawing. Um, it's not like we're working with pencils and paper and erasers here. It's all computers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very simple change in the design. Take minutes to present both options as far as I can determine. Mm -hmm. So I agree, Mr. DuPont, we should be, have both the review and then we can vote at that time. Okay. Any further comment from the board? Seeing none, then I think the it, it sounds like the, the preference of the board would be to proceed, would be to request the applicant to provide um, Plans and plans and elevations uh, for both options A and option B to be submitted to the board um, prior to the April 26 hearing 
uh, for the board to review. Um, and I think we would ask if, if it's possible, if option A and option B from this presentation can be provided to the board uh, for the record. So with that, I think that we would, with that request, I think I would ask the applicant if they would be willing to um, uh, agree to a continuance till April 26th at 7.30. Um, if, that's, uh, if that's what we need to do, uh, why can, can we make those plans happen? Yes. Okay, um, my only question, Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. is, you, you know, <clears throat> I do have a dog in this race, um, mm -hmm. which is that my preference is, is option B. Um, is there a way I can kind of, I don't know, take that into account here um, beyond the board? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess I'm asking like, I, my, my question to the board is not so much what the preference of the board is, although I respect their, the opinion of all, all the members, so much as is my preference mm -hmm. approvable and if not i'm happy to go with option a the the other one mm -hmm. uh, with with all due respect i, yeah, I no absolutely I, um i don't think there is any um there there certainly isn't any legal reason um, you know, that, that you would not be able, that, you know, you could not construct out that way. The question is in the board's findings that the board needs to be able to find that it's not more detrimental. And if the, whereas this is, you know, coming qu quite a bit forward, it, that's part of the board's de decision uh, as to whether or not to approve the, the special permit. I think the board is, is aware that the, the pref, that your, Preference as the owner is to proceed with option B, and that option A was prepared um, specifically at the request of the board, as was the the change in density of the frames in option B. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, I think that I mean two two points really. One is that Mr. Lasco does have the point that the issue before us is not which which option we prefer. Uh, that's that's not a decision that the law gives us. The question is really whether either of these things um, would be more detrimental to the neighborhood. The answer could be that while we sort of like option B better, A and B both would, would meet the detrimental to the neighborhood standard and it's up to, the, to Mr. Lasco, which he wants to pick. Um, I don't know that we can actually <laughs> commit ourselves without the plans actually to to seeing that, but we but we should realize that our uh, discretion here is is quite limited, and that the choice it, Mr. Lasco can really say if he wants to. He's shown us both of these things. Uh, he's heard what we have to say. He's got a strong position one way or the other. And my second point is that we haven't really given him a chance to make that argument yet um, and, and tell us why he prefers one rather than the other. But at the end of the day, he can decide what he wants to present to us and we can decide whether it meets the standard that the law gives us to apply. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable that we're beginning to be architects for this project rather than a board that is applying a law to it. And uh, uh, so I think I think Mr. Lasco is right. We're not really in a position to tell him do A and not B, um, and he has to make up his mind what he how important he thinks this issue will be to us, and we won't know ourselves until we begin deliberating uh, on it. Uh, but it may very well be that that what we ought to do now is spend at least a moment or two having Mr. Lasco explain to us why it is that he does have the preference he does, and in particular, why he thinks that if we are concerned about the imposing nature of the building as potentially being a detriment to the neighborhood, why he feels that that's not the case. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, Mr. Lasko, can you 
talk to us about the, your preferences um, in regards to the two options. Yeah, and I'll, I'll kind of start and uh, I'll have Mr. Brown uh, come in with architectural theory that supports <laughs> it. Um, I just like it better. <laughs> and, and I don't think it's imposing. Uh, I think I think the board's suggestion uh, to increase the spacing was was a great one, uh, and I, I I actually like this option better than our original submission. But I think the the continuity that this pro provides between the top structure and the additional um, and the front massing kind of makes this. It makes it less when you when you drive through New England, you see a lot of architecture architect, I use that term loosely, that was done before zoning boards and before design guidelines. And it looks like it was just like matchboxes glue stick together. And I really didn't want that for for my home. And that's why I um, engaged Mr. Mr. Brown services. And this better achieves that brief of um, less disruption, less disruptive lines, cleaner lines that look planned. That was the goal here. And I'll let Mr. Brown <laughs> translate that into architectural theory. <laughs> I don't know if I can do much better, actually, but. <laughs> Um, because yeah, it's not so much about theory as it is about you know this this idea that was that was written in the um, in the, uh, the the town design guidelines about modernism being these kind of interlocking masses, and so it's it's trying to to complete the the perception of mass while keeping a, a lightness and, and a clear you know change of, of of what's going on in there. And so I mean the question I, that I would generally ask is, is is if you look at the neighbor building right there, is that really any less imposing? Than this kind of light, airy, you know, pergola that basically sits there. Yeah, maybe it's it's a few feet forward, but it's um, but I mean, the, the proportions are much slimmer. The proportions are are are, are tighter, and so it, it actually I find it, 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 the the orange building or the kind of brownish one to the left is a bit more you know kind of you feel it's the, that that really high roof much more imposingly than this light one where it's clearly open. There's the, it's a it's a green space. It's a it's a connection between the street. And in and, and the in the the, uh, the the garden up there, so you can call down and be like, "Oh, hey, how you doing, Bob?" As as he walks by in the morning. So it's it's a much more it's a, it's a semi public private space, and so so that's where you know the 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 the, the ask uh, that was was given uh, a month ago when we did this was where was a concern about the it feeling imposing, and I mean really we can we can go right back to what what has been submitted, which is this. And it's, it's not that much different. And if you'd like me to like pencil in there, even this evening, a couple dimensions that you can vote and confirm, I'll gladly put those dimensions in there and we can say, okay, inspectional services call those dimensions. But I think that the change from what has actually been submitted to what we're showing is just showing it in context with the other neighbors so you can see that it's not as imposing. So this is where I, I wonder if it's, it's not really about the rendering, the rendering is just actually just backing it up. It's very much in line with what was proposed. So I, I think like asking to to get the specific, I mean, are you asking me to put a drawing with every single specific dimension placed on there and then you can hold to it? Or is it the spirit of the idea of really providing a, a, a you know, not so imposing um, public outdoor space that, that softens this desire to maintain these two interlocking volumes? I think that, sorry, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to remind the board that we are dealing here with a zero to a greater zero degree of open space, which we have a long series of precedents of having very minimal review. Uh, now, obviously, if this was, we thought this was seriously detrimental, we have to do what the law requires us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to say that when it comes to voting on this, I think that this is much that there was substance to the argument made last time that it was too imposing, that both of these options have addressed that. And I personally would be not be able to find either one of them more detrimental to the neighborhood. 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli. Uh, I just want to echo what Mr. Hanlon just mentioned. Uh, I mean, I think I was the one who spoke up most about um, uh, just the concern about it being potentially too imposing at the street. I think I think the um, architect and the applicant have done a great job addressing that concern. And if we were to vote tonight, uh, I think both would be acceptable to me. So if the board was, so I think that for me, the, the issue is just to make sure that the board has an accurate record that they can refer back to. Um, and that having, um, you know, the, the question of is the rendering sufficient for, um, for that record? Does it provide enough information for uh, us going forward? If somebody you know, feels that it was not built to the plans, do we have enough information here to say, oh, you know, yes, it was, yes, no, it wasn't. Um, and so I, I agree with the, with the, with the discussion that, you know, it really is incumbent on the, the owner to provide the drawings for uh, the option that, that he prefers and that is what he would like to see for his property. And then it is the, the board needs to make its final um, decision. And that the board's decision is really based on uh, the nature of the request, which is for the additional gross floor area. Um, and then the determination is just, is what is being um, provided by the applicant. Um, that doesn't meet the the criteria for a special permit, and I I see I would have certainly agree with my colleagues that um, you know both of these options appear uh, you know significantly better than what we had had seen prior, and I think certainly either would be would be fine. I do find myself somewhat surprised that I'm finding I'm preferring option B over option A when I think I was the one who had actually requested option. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, I I'd be happy to, if, if you wanted to write in a contingency such as the spacing between them has to have a minimum of, of 2.5 feet or, or something of, of that that has a level of specificity that we can we can immediately put into the drawings, mm -hmm. but uh, based off the what the, the, the plans that were submitted, uh, simply, you know, put in some some dimensional um, requirements that we can write very clearly right now and, and Mr. Um, uh, the inspector whose, whose name I can't recall, uh, Varelli, um, can actually enforce. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Yeah, a couple of comments. Uh, one is um, we have played architect once in a while where we've asked uh, individuals to modify their design, like moving their dormers back from the front of the house, you know, so the streetscape wasn't so imposing or aligning the windows with the current windows to keep it more orderly looking. Uh, that's one comment. My second comment is, has the uh, applicant reviewed the designs with his neighbors and what are their feelings? Do they have a preference? Mr. Lasko? Mr. Chairman, I, I was under the impression that the neighbors, mm -hmm. that this the purpose of this hearing was mm -hmm. open to public comment of my neighbors and, and yep. beyond. They are aware in general that I'm doing this. And okay. uh, uh, my neighbors in the uh, in that Brown house had intended to come to the, the last meeting, um, David Curran and mm -hmm. his wife, Joanna, had intended to come to the last meeting. They couldn't make it um, in support okay. of this, but no, I have not received reviewed specific plans um, and you know details such as pergola, pergola spacing and where they go with my neighbors. And there's there is certainly no requirement to do so. Um, I think it's it's more an informational question. Is there any further questions from the board? If not, I think I am going. I would recommend to the board that we um, request that the applicant can uh, revise the, the drawing set that was provided at the prior hearing per um, the preferred option here and that uh, the board continues until 
um, if the April 26th hearing, at which time um, we can for, we can just have a a quick review and and vote on the the drawings that are provided to us that we're sh we're certain that the the record is as um, is it as tight as it can be. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. And so uh, just to confirm with the board, this is a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 46 River Street until Tuesday, April 26th at 7.30 p.m. with the request that the uh, applicant revise their uh, drawing set provided at the prior hearing per um, their favored option that has been presented this evening. So with that uh, vote of roll call vote of the board, uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we are continued on 46 River Street until, excuse me, April 26th at 7.30 p.m. Um, Mr. Lasko, Mr. Brown, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, you as well. That I will return to our agenda for this evening. The next item on our docket is item number four, docket number 36928 Glenburn Road. Um, with that, I would uh, introduce Mr. Nagel and ask him to explain what he would like to do. Hi, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This is Brendan Nagel, um, and this is my wife, Hillary Richard. We also have our architect, Sally Degan, on the call today. Um, thank you very much for hearing us today. We are a family of five living on Glenburn Road. We've lived in this home for 12 years, um, and we love the town. We love Arlington. We're very happy to be raising our family here. We have three children at the Brackett School, uh, and we want to keep our family here in Arlington, and that is necessitating a remodel. Uh, we are doing a, a fairly typical Arlington remodel where we're just bumping out the back of the home, adding a few rooms on the first floor and a bedroom on the second floor. The design is consistent with looks in the neighborhood and with other remodels that we've seen done in the neighborhood and on our street. Uh, from the front of the home, there's really only a minimal change in the street view, just adding a small roof over the existing steps. Uh, other than that, there is um, just one change to one window in the front of the home. Uh, we're not disturbing any of the trees. Uh, and in fact, we told all of the neighbors uh, behind us, to the left, to the right, across the street, uh, about what's going on and we received overwhelming support. In fact, there are 13 letters that were sent in and are uploaded on the Novus website. Um, also the Department of Planning um, and Community Development has put a letter in that recommends the approval of our request for a special permit. Um, if you would like us to go over the plans and the look, I would turn that over to our architect uh, but with that, I'll I'll see if you have any questions for us. Thank you. Um, I was going to go ahead and just share the the package that you had submitted. Um, so this is these are images um, of the house from the front. This is a image of the neighbor neighborhood with abutting properties. I believe, if I'm correct, it's this house here. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, mm -hmm. and here, uh, existing and proposed basement showing the extension to the rear. First floor again. Uh, so this porch is proposed to be removed. This portion added to the house and then a, a new deck at the very rear. Uh, 
the second floor level. Uh, this portion of the first floor is covered. Um, and then this is the extension at the second floor level. So from the front, there's very, very little difference. Um, just the entrance piece and the window above the entry. This is a rear elevation. You could change there. And then the greater change is on the, is from the, the side view. You can see that it's extending back towards, uh, towards the rear of the property. Just want to go briefly back. So this is uh, the the site plan. So currently the uh, the left side setback is at four point six feet, um, and the extension um, the house is slightly turned in relation to the side lot line. So it's actually moving farther away. So it's at four point seven feet at the back corner. Excuse me of the house, and then the the deck is continuing along that line as well. Um, and then the opposite property line, the right side line, um, although the front of the house is not conforming, the addition is well within the conforming distances and there's no issues with the, with the depth of the rear yard. And I believe, uh, back, um, that the, None of the, even though they do have sort of a largest rear yard, it does not count as usable open space, I believe primarily because of the pitch of the rear yard. Um, it's the application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Can we go back to the dimensional screen? I do believe the right side clearance actually increased. If we go to the table. Number 13, right side yard depth mm -hmm. goes from 9.7 to 10.2. I'm wondering how that happened. Um, just ask the applicant, is there any change to this one single story bump out on the right hand side or is that remaining as is? That is remaining as is. Okay. I think that's just an error in the table and an okay. entry. Just wanted to get clear on that. Okay. Um, and then the other question I had had when I was reviewing the application. So on this page, uh, the existing gross floor areas listed as 2519 increasing to 4,030, and then on this page, it's 1720 extending to 2637. Um, and I would just ask the architect if they could confirm which set of numbers is correct. Am I actually on? You are. <laughs> ah. Welcome, Mr. Gannon. Good evening. Um, this table, the the total gross floor area is calculated, I think, differently from one area to the next. Do you, do you know which is calculated per the formula in the local zoning bylaw? Well, when we fill out this form, it, you, you, you plug in the numbers and it fills it out automatically. Um, is that what? Good. And I think I know if you put, it may transfer it from page. There's some things that do transfer, I believe, but I think um, it doesn't do calculations. So I think the, the question is just what is the actual Would you mind repeating the question or showing us the two different? Oh, sure, absolutely. So, um, so on this page here, line three is the existing gross floor area, uh, which is listed as 2,519. Mm -hmm. And then on line five, the proposed gross floor area is listed as 4,030 square feet. And then when we go to this, the subsequent page where we're 
doing the calculation of the gross floor area, um, the existing only total 1720 and the proposed is 2637. I think the answer is probably something like what we're looking at right now is just the first and second floor. Mm -hmm. And on the page that you showed before, uh, since those numbers are higher, I believe that it would include uh, basement space. Okay. Um, Mr. Valarelli, do you have any concerns about us proceeding with the, not knowing the very specific GFA? Because I think it, for this application, I don't think it matters that it, it is known that the property is ex, is being increased by greater than 750 square feet. Uh, that's true, Mr. Chairman. So for some reason, the uh, calculations ask you to compute the area that's above five feet for um, GFA purposes, uh, it's confusing and it really shouldn't. So I think the applicant is absolutely right in her determination and her calculations that she included because the application asked her to, to include anything above five feet in the GFA when in fact the um, true GFA is yeah. uh, seven feet and above. Where was that reference to five feet and above? Um, it is on the application somewhere. I'm sorry, I don't see it here. The, I, I think the, the bottom line to this request is simply that they are requesting an addition that exceeds 750 square feet. Okay. Yeah, it's just if there's an error in our forms, I wanna make sure that we, we address that. Um, it, was, it was unusual, and I can send you more specifics tomorrow in an email. That would be fantastic. That, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, there was a crossover between the older application and the newer application. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm scanning it as we speak, but maybe we can follow up with this at a later date. Okay. Perfect. Um, so are there questions uh, from the board in regards to um, request? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. I just want to be clear. The staffing, excuse me, the planning uh, department's report states that there is a small uh, a extension of point zero point one feet on the left side yard setback from four point six to four point seven. Is that the one that we decided a few moments ago? Uh, is in fact not the case, and that it there isn't a diminution of the setback. Um, it's not the setback is getting larger and not getting smaller. So the building is canted as it, as the building goes back, it's right. canted away from the property line. So the distance is getting long, the wider. Right. So the staff report is an error on that, right? Um, I would have it to, says that it's extending the nonconformity on the left yard, and actually, it's reducing the nonconformity. That is, yeah, it's it's definitely it's it is not an intensification of the existing nonconformity. And then as we had reviewed before, the portion on the right-hand side is, and towards the rear are both outside of setbacks. So there's, there are no new non-conformities. Um, it's just the, the existing non-conformity that's being uh, maintained or diminished. Probably with all of these letters, Mr. Chairman, finding no detriment would have been relatively easy in this case, but it's not, nice not to have to deal with that. Absolutely. Are there Mr. any further questions? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Uh, no, that's Mr. DuPont. Oh, Mr. DuPont, beg your pardon. I know we start sounding alike the longer <laughs> we've all been together. Uh, so I, I guess I just wanted, because I'm not sure that it matters exactly where that 2,500 square foot number came up. And I would just, again, point to the planning department's memo and that uh, says that it's increasing square footage from 1720 to 2637. And as a, you've already pointed out, it's an increase of more than 750 square feet. But 
are, we're comfortable, are we not, just using that 1720 to the 2637? I mean, I feel like that seems right, intuitively <laughs> looking at the size of the house. And I guess I'd ask the applicant of, or the applicant's architect whether or not that's their understanding, the 1720. Th that is our understanding based on the one reading of the code and how we calculate it, yes. Okay, thanks. Any further questions from the board? You know, with that, I will go ahead. I would like to uh, open this hearing for public comment at this time. Um, as we have said before, um, public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand, which should be directed to the board. Um, members of the public wish to speak, you can use the raise hand feature uh, under the participant tab in Zoom, or if you're calling it by phone, you can dial star nine. Um, and with that, um, we have Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Uh, I have a couple of questions for the applicant about the project. Um, okay. The first one would be, um, there's a significant slope in the in the rear portion of the uh, of the property. Is that uh, found under, uh, is there a ledge there or is that just a, a typical not ledge slope? I can direct that to the applicant. Um, the, so I'm not sure exactly where you're referring to. There is not, there's a, um, there's actually a, a play structure in the backyard. It's relatively flat. Basically the backyard has like three tiers. There's a flat section with a play structure in the very back. Then in the middle section, there's just a nice lawn with a tree. And then there's the lower section, which is where the, where the, um, where the, the porch is. The place where you see the topo lines closest together in the drawing that we're looking at sort of to the right of the tree. This is like a maybe a 10, eight or 10 foot garden that is on a steeper slope. Um, we've observed no ledge in the time that we've lived here. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was looking at the topo lines. It looked like there was quite a slope. And when I heard the use of the space was not able to, that wasn't able to be counted because of the slope, mm. I was wondering about um, the construction impact if there had been ledge there. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, that's the first question. The second one is, um, how, how is the applicant planning to access the rear of the house for construction? There are very narrow setbacks here and, a significant, and it's a relatively significant project. How are they gonna do that? Uh, so the driveway on the right side of the home has an existing staircase that is, um, that we are planning on actually uh, building a ramp over. And then in the, the picture that you're looking at here, you see the, the car on the right. And then we're going to be removing that, um, that fence line. Um, all of the work is going to be done on our property. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that, that's helpful. The reason, the reason I'm asking these sorts of questions is I see there's um, the large tree in back, which you implied you're going to uh, be protecting and, and not impacting with this construction, which I applaud. I'm a member of the tree committee and this is a significant tree. I think it said 46 inch diameter oak. So that's a significant mature tree. I would, uh, I would suggest as I think I uh, saw that you, a tree plan, I think a tree plan is going to be required. I'm not completely sure. The Arlington Tree Warden can help you with that. The only reason I bring up a tree plan is that tree is going to require some, some significant protections during the construction. And uh, I think he can recommend what to do. I also noted that there's two small trees, or at least one in front of your house, but one nearby, that have just recently been planted by the town on the public way. And you're gonna to have to significantly protect those too because those are much more fragile being the small size that they are. And uh, I don't know if the way you're gonna access the rear of the house for the construction has implications particularly for those trees, but I would uh, suggest you get with the tree warden to figure out how to protect them, particularly that tree in back, which is magnificent by the way. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I'd just like to make a quick comment that I echo all of your comments, Mr. Moore. In the contractors that have been bidding our project, we give similar <laughs> directions to what you're saying, and we have money built into the uh, the bids to protect those trees. Uh, we love that tree in the backyard. It's you, we wouldn't be doing the remodel if we had to disturb the tree. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wish to speak on this matter? Um, just to, to echo, as, as Mr. Nagel had mentioned before, the board is in receipt of 13 letters of support from uh, neighbors, um, both abutting and, um, and nearby. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment for this evening. Um, so then the, the request for the board, it's a request for a special permit. Um, because the as a, a large addition um, in excess of 750 square feet. Um, as we've reviewed the plans, there's a lot of um, very public, uh, very, um, excuse me, positive um, comment, public comment. Um, we have the, the comment from Mr. Moore as well in regards to the, the protection of the trees. Are there any further questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Can I address a question to Mr. Valorelli, please? Certainly, Mr. Mills. Mr. Valorelli, isn't it true if they're seeking a building permit that the tree warden is involved automatically? Mr. Valorelli? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm trying to get on video. Um, correct, Mr. Mills. So the um, building commissioner has now made every project of any scope necessary to be signed off by the tree warden. So it's part of the permit package. Uh, no matter what you're doing, uh, it has to be approved by the tree warden. And nine out of 10 times it will come back is uh, no enforcement necessary, but, but nevertheless, as I stated before many times on many of these hearings, uh, the building commissioner has that base covered. Perfect. So, to be, so to be clear, if someone's seeking a permit, the tree warden is going to go out and inspect the area. Absolutely, unless the applicant can convince the tree warden that it's not necessary. In any event, his signature is necessary on any project with any sizable scope. Thank you, Mr. Valorelli. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valorelli. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just one of the things that Mr. Moore, though, is 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 very helpful on is it, it's one thing to consult the tree warden because you have to and because you need to have the tree warden sign off. Uh, but the tree warden also serves a different function and that is to be an advisor to people who want to do the right thing and who may need to get that advice at a point when it can be appropriately followed. And I think that sounds to me as if it's the precisely the sort of thing that Mr. Moore is encouraging and that the applicant uh, would would welcome. And so uh, I don't know that we need to put in a condition about consulting and getting a tree plan and anything like that. The law would say that, but I think Mr. Moore's in, intervention is, is helpful. So sometimes you don't know what you need to do to protect some of these trees until an expert tells you and the town has that resource. And when you see the possibility that it might be needed, it's very helpful to bring that to the attention of the applicant. Absolutely, thank you. Other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? I've gotten lost in where we are in the proceeding. I, I did want to say that because this is a special permit for a large addition, uh, we have to make a finding uh, under uh, uh, section six, I'm forgetting suddenly it's 5.4 or something or other six, um, which is that it would be in harmony uh, with the other structures and uses in the neighborhood and that uh, in making that determination, we have to consider, uh, among other things, the proposed alteration or additions to mentions and setbacks in relationship to abutting structures uh, and the uses and its conformity to the purposes of the bylaw. 
So just focusing on that part of it, I just wanted to say that from what I've heard, I don't think it would be difficult for the board to make that finding. Uh, obviously, there is a very narrow space between this pro the this property and and the next door uh, properties, and so that raises a possibility of the kind of encroachment that this bylaw was was intended to avoid. And by putting this in the backyard in the way that they've done, and for the reasons that I really stated in the staff report, they've minimized that impact. And I think that the correspondence we've received sort of indicates that that is, is something that fits into the harmony of the neighborhood. But I just wanted to say that effect on the on the record because it's not it's not in, in terms exactly the same as we need to do for every special permit. And it's important to address not just the general factors in 3.3.3, but the special factors that exist in, in other areas of the bylaw that we have to address as well. Thank you, Mr. Hamlin. Um, so I, I think it, I think the board's at a point where we can render a decision um Mr. sorry mr chair one question mr. Holy, please. <laughs> yeah uh, this alteration would um, increase the impervious area um of the lot by more than 350 square feet would there be a calculations for that or uh, is it already in the drawings um mr valorelli is that something that is included in the documentation or is that something that will be that's all the that engineer <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, that's automatic. That's on the <coughs> ISD checklist. So okay. that will automatically be uh, executed. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so before the board, um, we'll put together a, uh, a recommended vote, I would, in a, in a motion, um, there are just like to discuss uh, conditions with the board. There are three standard conditions, um, which the board includes on um, all of its reviews. The first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two is building inspectors hereby notified that he is to monitor the site and to proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time. There's a determination that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And standard condition number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Um, as some of the optional conditions the board has adopted in the past, um, I would ask that the that we include that the applicant is to provide a revised and signed uh, dimensional and parking information, open space, gross floor area sheets, correcting any deficiencies discussed at the hearing to the special services department for review. Uh, that's just to make sure that the, the, the paperwork is all cleared um, in regards to the change in the, the gross floor area of the house so that we're, that the special services is clear as to what those numbers are. Um, and then we had discussed the possibility of, um, putting in a condition in regards to uh, consultation with the town engineer and the tree warden. And as Mr. Valerelli has noted, um, since the time that we have included these in the past, uh, the procedures now in ISD do include um, a direct review by those, those entities. So um, those conditions are not required. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanlon. Um In my view, on the the condition on the trees, mm -hmm. um, I would feel more comfortable if we continue to use belt and suspenders for a little while. For a little while, okay. um, as the chairman knows from another hat that he wears, um, there is a proposal 
for inc from the tree committee uh, for increasing the protection and and some dissatisfaction they have seen in the way the current bylaw has been working. And I would just like to be able to, until that is all dealt with and, and if there are, is a need to any additional, um, uh, to anything in the bylaw that, that it's all done. And at that point, maybe we can consider getting rid of the suspenders, although given my waistline, it's more the belt. But the, uh, either, either way, I, I think that, that it, it, it doesn't do any harm to put the standard condition on that in there while this is still going on. Thank you. So that uh, that reads as the board requests the applicant work with the tree warden to address compliance with the town's tree protection and preservation bylaw. That's great. So that would be one, two, three, four, five conditions. The three standard plus the one about the <clears throat> the, the dimensional information sheet and the other one about the working with the tree warden. Are there any other proposed conditions from the board? Seeing none, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the application be approved subject to the three uh, standard conditions and the two additional ones that have just been read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. So this is a vote of the board to approve a special permit for 88 Glenburn Road with a total of five conditions. I will do a roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. The chair votes aye. That motion is approved. Um, the special permit is approved as conditioned. Uh, so the board will prepare a final written decision uh, to be voted on um, at a subsequent uh, meeting. And uh, the applicant can go ahead and speak with Mr. Valerelli about next steps. Thank you all so much, Mr. Right. Chairman and board. We really appreciate your time and your affirmative vote. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck. Good luck. Brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is item number five, docket 3691, 18 Brantwood Road. Um, so with that, um, I believe the architect uh, Keith Miller is here representing the applicant on this application. Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, chairman and members of the board, uh, my name is Keith Miller from Miller Design, and I'm here representing the Massad family at 18 Brantwood Road in their request for a special permit for insufficient open space for their home pursuant of section 8.1.3b of the Arlington Zoning Ordinance for the R1 Zoning District. When the family purchased the property a year ago, it was very dated with original windows and interior finishes. The upstairs bathroom was located in the eaves with ceiling heights ranging from three feet to six and a half feet. Primary purpose of the new dormer is to create a modern code compliant bathroom with code compliant ceiling heights. The proposed design removes the existing small low ceiling hip style dormer and replaces it with a zoning compliant shed style dormer matching the existing dormer on the opposite side of the house. The only area of non-compliance came under the definition of open spaces. The existing non-conforming lot is small on a steep incline and lacking any space that could be used for the, for the uh, space square requirements, leaving the property with zero open space. The new 86 gross square feet of bathroom dormer space therefore requires your approval. I'd also like to note that I saw the town's notes regarding the half story. It is not listed, but the existing story has a total of 1,437 square feet under the roof. Um, and 469 square feet of that is the seven foot requirement. So it is indeed more than half and the total under the roof does not include the attached garage roof as it's a low roof and it is no connection to it from the second floor. So we are asking the Zoning Board of Appeals to grant us a special permit allowing us to build the stormer addition as proposed. It is our belief that the proposed addition is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and not detrimental to the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the drawings here. Uh, so this is the 
uh, the site plan uh, for the property. So as you can see, there is no point on this property where there's a 25 by 25 square foot area, which would comply with the open space provision. So it's pre-existing non-conforming, having zero usable open space. Um, about the house. <clears throat> Plan. So this is the existing floor plan on the second on the upper floor. So they currently have um, a small dormer on this side, uh, which I believe is a hip dormer. Um, and the intention is to replace that with a shed dormer, as the architect had said, that matches the one on the opposite side. So here are the existing elevations. So on on the lower one, you can see the shed dormer to the right. Um, that's existing, and to the left, you can see the hip dormer that's to be removed. Um, forward, this is again a similar plan, so you can see uh, that the, there is a new dormer added um, on the opposite side that matches the, the existing. Right. National sheets. And then the upper, just read that the upper floor is as it says is 469. 86 square feet of additional space. Yep. Which is well below the, the we're approaching 50% of the area of the floor below. Are there questions from the board in regards to this application? Seeing any? With that I will go ahead and open the, this hearing for public comment. Um, again, public comments, questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand should be directed to the board. Um, if you wish to speak, you can raise your hand by using the, the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application, or if you're dialing in by phone, you may dial star nine. And with that, um, member of the public, Mr. Moore. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. And I want to uh, applaud Mr. Handler's comments on the earlier case. He is spot on in terms of the issues to do with uh, trees. Yes, the, the bylaw is going to be in front of town meeting again this year because of changes we have found we must, must request. Um, there, and the reason I am continuing to participate in these meetings, even though we have made some progress, like the addition of the tree uh, checkoff on the uh, checklist itself and the building permit issue, uh, even in spite of that, um, we are making not great progress on the tree canopy. Mistakes are continuing to be made relative to development, redevelopment, and following of the, uh, the rules and the bylaws. So this is why I continue to participate here and, and we'll continue to offer uh, advice to applicants, just as Mr. Hanlon mentioned, they may not know what they don't know and the tree warden will help them and I am encouraging that. So thank you for your uh, patience. Mr. Moore, do you have anything particular to this application? Uh, no, I do not, Mr. Chair. Very good, thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, sorry, I cut my own self off. No, I do not, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Are there any other public questions or comments as they relate to this application? Going once, going twice. Go ahead and close public comment uh, on this hearing. Uh, so the application before the board is fairly straightforward. It's re removing um, an existing small door, uh, small hip dormer, replacing it with a, a larger shed dormer um, in keeping with the, the size scale and uh, proportions of the of an existing shed dormer on the opposite side of the house. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. 
So this is one of our typical zero goes to a greater degree of zero cases that we have a longstanding history of, um, of approving. Uh, and mostly that has been based on the notion that when you, when the only issue that you have before you has, is that it's highly unlikely that there's a detrimental effect on the neighborhood. And this seems to me to be right in the core of that presumption. Uh, and I, I don't see how there's any, it's conceivable that there might have been, but in this particular case, uh, there is no reason I don't think to depart from our usual precedent on this. And so I will be in support. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Mr. Riccadelli, please. Um, I, I see a note on the, um, the memo from the planning department that this home is listed on the Arlington Inventory of Historically and Architecturally Significant Structures. Um, is there a separate approval that is needed from them? Um, for the, this job. We'll reference that to Mr. Miller. Uh, yes, yeah. so if you actually, if you look at the drawings, there's a there's a calculation on each of the elevation sheets. Uh, our, the town of Arlington, and if Mr. Valarelli is still on, he can acknowledge this, requires that uh, if there's less than 25% of a change, including swapping out old windows for new windows, that you need to present it to the board. And that is under the uh, jurisdiction of the building commissioner. So he would review the drawings, ascertain whether or not that 25% threshold is met, and then send it on to historic or approve it as is. So my drawings do note the percentages of the various elevations that are changing, they're well below 25%. Just a little chart there on the right-hand side that shows existing spaces and areas of change. Thank you for clarifying. No problem. Thank you. Are there any other further questions from the board? Hearing and seeing none, uh, should the board be, uh, vote to approve this application, um, I would recommend that we include our three standard uh, conditions, which were read for the prior hearing. Um, are there any other conditions that members of the board would want to um, impose on this application? Seeing and hearing none, uh, the chair would ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I move that the application be approved subject to the three standard conditions. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Any further questions from the board on what the vote includes? Being and hearing none, I will do a roll call vote of the members of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, motion to approve the special permit for 18 Brent Road Road with the three stated conditions is approved. Uh, the board will prepare a final written uh, decision to be voted on by the board at a subsequent hearing. Uh, and the applicant can go ahead and uh, discuss uh, next steps with Mr. Valarelli. Thank you very much for your time this evening, gentlemen. I'm going to be uh, seeing a lot more of you. Have three of the projects with the exact same condition, not the dormer, <laughs> not the dormer, but the zero. I'm, ah. filing, I'm filing one next week, and then two more following up on that. This might not be the right form. I have one quick question that one of my clients asked me about yeah. a specific item. They were somewhat taken aback by the the 25 by 25 foot square for existing houses. Yep. They wondered why new houses had to meet a, meet a lesser requirement than a house that had already been there. And I didn't really have a good answer for them for that. Um, so Mr. Hanlon can help correct me if I have it wrong, but that was added at the request of town meeting a few years back because there were a number of projects where um, rather than including surface parking, there were the parking was being put underneath. And so there was, uh, you know, sort of a very steep drop off from the edge of the dry, uh, the edge of the sidewalk down into the basement for parking. And so to try to, one of the reasons that people were saying that that was happening was because they couldn't, um, they couldn't pull the house, they couldn't move the house in a, in a way that would allow them to provide the usable open space and to have parking on the site. And so the town voted to decrease that for new construction 
in an attempt to try to encourage more at-grade parking. All right, that's a good answer. I can give that to them and I hope <laughs> that will alleviate them of their worries. <laughs> But they are, they are by far not alone in having zero usable open space. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nope, I understand. All right. Thank you again very much for your time this evening, gentlemen. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you uh, so this brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is item number six, docket 3688-44 Edmund Road. Um, as was uh Noted earlier um, that we're going, the applicant has requested a further continuance um, on this application to make uh, a series of changes. Uh, Mr. Valarelli, had they were, am I right that they are requesting an, a, a continuance to, I believe you said May 10th? They are, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so with that, I would. Uh, motion that we continue the special permit hearing for 44 Edmund Road until uh, Tuesday, May 10th at 7.30 p.m. I have a second. 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 And then we'll do a vote of members present. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Uh, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. And Mr. Holly? Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And the chair votes aye. So we are continued um, on 44 Edmund Road. Um, so then with that, uh, so next we have a hearing scheduled for a uh, meeting scheduled for Tuesday, April 26th at 7.30 p.m. and which is two weeks, um, we will be uh, having a return of four and six, four to six River Street, um, as we had discussed earlier this evening. Um, and then I had wanted to spend some time reviewing uh, the ZBA's policies and procedures and hold an election for uh, board officers. Um, so the the ZBA's uh, policy uh, rules and regulations are on the ZBA website, so I encourage you all to uh, to pull those down and take a read through them in the, in the next two weeks and see if there's anything um, that you you think may be uh, confusing or could use a little bit of a polish or if you have any questions on anything so we can um, have that conversation next time. Um, Mr. Handel and myself are going to have a conversation with the uh, uh, with the a uh, building inspector in regards to uh, policies and procedures for how the board interacts with inspectional services. So uh, we can uh, have some more information on that um, at that meeting as well. Uh, and then the board has two officers that we elect. We have a chair, um, which seat I currently have, and uh, Mr. Hanlon is our vice chair. Um, and so if anyone is interested in running for these positions, um, uh, you know, we certainly bring that up at the next hearing. Um, and then after the meeting on the 26th, um, we'll have a meeting on May 10th. Um, as we just voted, we will have a uh, 44 Edmund Road. And Mr. Valrelli, are there other hearings on the docket for the 10th at this point? There are, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have, um... Minor in nature, I believe, one large addition, uh, maybe a usable open space. But I think the board, if they could plan on four hearings that night, would be uh, safe to say. Okay. Perfect. Any further business for the board? Seeing none, I thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. Especially wish to thank uh, Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, and Marissa Lau for their assistance in preparing for and hosting our online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. It's our understanding that recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the ZBA's website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? second. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont. Uh, aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Cardelli. Aye. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very Good much. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.